Well, actually, that's why we're here. We brought you some of our home brew. And, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a job. Yeah, just trying to get it. What do you think? What do you think? It's like, listen to my mixtape. Like, you, want, you want to do it live? <laughs> yeah, we'll do it live. I, I wouldn't want to see your face. <laughs> Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewhead? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 40 of Beer and Other Shit, the podcast. I didn't even. Uh, That's okay. Hey, I'm Scott Beer, Cold Beer Enthusiast. <laughs> and we are in a very special place right now. Would you, lovely folks, introduce yourselves really quickly, if you may? Sure. My name is uh, Jean Francois. You can call me JF. Jean Francois Gravel from uh, Microbrasserie du Ciel, uh, Montreal and Saint Jerome. So yes. right now we're located in the Saint Jerome Brewery. Yes, we are. And I am, <laughs> I am Jen, and I'm a brewer here in Saint Jerome. Fantastic. So yes, we are here in Judas CL in St. Jerome for the uh, a bottle launch today. Yeah. Um, does it have a name is it, or is it just because like, it's a general bottle well, launch? Uh, it's our annual uh, party. So, annual party? Okay, yeah. so this is a once a year launch? Once a, well, we do like two launch a year, one during right. summertime, and this is a, but the winter one uh, in the same time of our mm-hmm. annual party. Uh, a party for, um, right. for the it's part, our birthday for, party. It's a birthday, birthday yes. party. And is it 18? 19. 19 years. Right? Well, the thing is, it's going to be 19 at the Brew Pub, so right. during the CL, but here uh, it's the ninth anniversary. Right, because it's 2006. This opened, is that well, right? we started producing in 2007, and then, right. but the pub opened in 2008. Okay, multiple anniversaries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we create reason to do party. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, to celebrate, right? Why not, right? Um, thank you guys very much for having us here. This is, uh, you know, clearly a big deal. You guys are world renowned for what you do. Um, which let's get into what we're drinking right now. So we actually have two different beers. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with these ones. So I think uh, Jen, the three of us have uh, morality. No. no. The ultra oh, the other mosaic. Way around. Ultra mosaic. Yeah. Which is a. Do you want to talk us through, Jeff? Well, we we try to, to find a fancy name, so we call it like a ultra, a ultra, ultra pale ale. Ultra pale ale. Ultra so pale ale. Okay. It could be an IPA, but no, we we it's only four uh, five point two percent alcohol. So on the lighter side of the uh, alcohol. So it used to be the the mosaic ale used to be more like a pale ale, and we just push it a little bit on on the hops, put it uh, a bit uh, a bigger dry up and everything, then mm-hmm. decide to call it the hill trauma Zyka. Okay. But it's also to uh, uh, Jennifer have the uh, the morality, which is more like uh, American IPA seven percent. So we were looking to have like a, a beer with lighter alcohol content for summertime. Yep. So. Um, and so we, we could call it an IPA. Was well, it's, well, paleo is not that sexy now. So we <laughs> so can jazz it up a little bit. Yeah. Ultra paleo. Is it exclusively mosaic hops in here? It is not. Okay. Um, it's just mostly uh, mosaic. It's just definitely mosaic for the hop. Mm-hmm. But I actually I don't really like to brew it only one hop. Sometimes I'm gonna put the uh, the accent on one hop, the other accent on one hop. But I usually prefer to work with at least three different hops. Right. It's, it's like working with only one hops, even it's really good. It's like a solo drum. Right. right. Okay. It's good, but after a while it's getting boring. Right. right. You put the bass in it. Okay. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> and the guitar. Oh, now we have some. Right. Hops is the same thing. So. Right. I love that. Well, cheers, guys. Let's yes, cheers. Cheers. Try. cheers. Yes. No, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You know what? I have, we also have a, uh, um, I guess, a blog portion. And part of the way we uh, blog, or I do, <laughs> yeah. multi yeah, technology going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's always yeah, funny to get a selfie. Yeah. yeah. Jump in, Scotty. Jump in. So, and Jen, you have the morality. Yes. Which is the collab with the alchemist. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys do you guys do a lot of collabs? Not a lot. Um, no, pretty rare. Not rare, but um, I know it's been it's been a big trend. And so I and I don't like to do a collaboration just because it's a trend and you know it's, it happened to me. So we, we you're going to uh, to uh, like to the CBC and you met a brewer for the first time and said, well, we should collab. It's, huh. We don't even know each <laughs> other. So, yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. So we don't even know if we share the same thing about beer philosophy and everything. Right. So right. and I like to do a collaboration when we're just talking and we have like an idea just about it and boom and okay yeah, yeah we should do something how did have, uh, this one come about well John is an old friend of, our, from, of us and uh, we uh, we were talking well, we should come to the pub having fun and just brew a beer and uh, so Bim one of my formal uh, head brewer at the, at the brew pub for the um, 
the uh, Moselle of La Bière. Actually, he wanted to do a several collaborations for that, so he pushed me kind of to do collaborations. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, right. Right. <laughs> and uh, well, it's okay. Let's, let's have a, let's do something with John because we we share a lot of ID together, and and so we decide to do like uh, an hybrid between the type of IP he's doing and, and the type of IP um, I'm doing. Very cool. And. Um, and so we brewed the beer, and the name come basically because uh, just the day before uh, we brewed, he just bring us a couple of cases of beer, and so we had the Morality Squad show up at our bar just right. checking our license. <laughs> and we're saying, That's cool. "How come you have a Morality Squad?" So it's well, it's, it's dating back from the '50s, so we, they never changed the name, but they basically the, the cops who you know watching about the bar and right. uh, running it right. and say. So, because for him from the morality squad, <laughs> so and then so it's okay. So we cut guy from morality, and then we keep we kept the name. Right. Right. Yeah, I like it. That's okay. super cool. Yeah. I love that. So even just to step back a bit further, I'd love to hear how your two individual stories, like how you got into beer. I know a bit about you, JF, mm -hmm. um, clearly, but yeah, I'm doing just wanna, It doesn't have to be super lengthy, but just to let people know, because a lot of folks, you know, watching and listening are. Um, you know, home brewers who, who want to get into the game, and from you guys being in, in one of the OGs, as we call them, in in, in, in beer as and as we as we as the original gangster, triple the beer world. Yeah, um, yeah like it, they share share the knowledge. I think people would really be fascinated with that. Well, uh, I have a pretty typical uh, background. So I, I started as a brewer in uh, home brewer in '91, I think. Um, just because uh, I was at the college and I uh, had a friend who started homebrewing and and one of the reasons because you know it turned out to be really cheap to have a party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool! And by this Amen. and by this time, you no know, having good beer, uh, even the microbrew was hard to get, really expensive. I was at college, just, oh. yeah, and yes. then after a few batches, I said, well, you know, it would be nice if it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I was studying in science, so I always loved the science. Side of behind the, yeah. uh, of, the, of, the, of the beer uh, fabrication so I just get uh, read into it and it's always stayed uh, like the parallel background of, uh, of, uh, of the school and, uh, and university I met my uh, business partner uh, Stefan and so I said well you know running a brew pub would be nice so I I was doing more mostly uh, enzyme production for uh, 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 paper whitening, so it was wasn't that really sexy. <laughs> so I said, so, uh, I, I prefer doing fermentation and drink it. You know? Yes, fair enough. And uh, yeah, and by this time, uh, yeah, there was still quite few microbrewery, not so much uh, uh, brew pub in Montreal, and I definitely didn't want to bottle and everything. I, I want to have the freedom to create uh, a new beer, so you just have to take a chart and put it on the board. And so I started with a small system, five hectoliters, so I knew I would have to brew all the time. Yep. But it was a way I could learn a lot and fast and develop yeah. different type of beer. And just 10 years after, I, we decided to move in St. Jerome for the bottling. Right. So was that because of um, uh, demand? Like people were wanting... <clears throat> well, there was two things. There was a big demand. I could not brew enough at the brew pub to supply just the pub, so right. it was one of the reasons. The other thing, uh, so people were loving our beer and he was asking for it and also I was I think looking for a new challenge you know the brew pub is fun and so well, after it was you know you see all the, the people bring and selling their beer not not always really good say so, <laughs> wait okay I, I should do something so. right but yeah you, you come to a point you need a new challenge and of course so I was ready for that okay amazing that's dope. And then what was, uh, what's your, how'd you get into beer? Mine? Um, mostly just because like I spent my 20s kind of semi-retired doing nothing, just like <laughs> traveling and bartending. Good times. And uh, yeah, it was great, but I had a, like a existential crisis coming up to my 30th birthday and was like, oh, oh God, I got to do something <laughs> yeah. in my life. And I guess the, it was like a logical progression from what I was doing before because I was working in bars and progressively yeah. better bars that had better beer selections. Right. Got interested in beer and was like, hey, I wonder if I could make this. Made a few bad batches of homebrew, and then just timing worked out at, right when I was having these ideas. Niagara College launched that program. Yes, oh, yes, nice. yes. Yeah, so that I was in, great. Yeah, I so was. So you, you were a graduate of that uh, program? I was, yeah. I was in the second class, so oh, I know nice. the format's a little bit different now, but I was a part of the two-year program, um, like the second graduating class, so I did that, and then it was just sort of a bit of my plan to convince Jeff to give me a job. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if I did this program, if I could, you know, move to Quebec, and then, like... 
somehow wangle my way into JF's life and make him hire me. And it nice. worked out. It was really easy, actually. <laughs> I thought it would take a lot longer. Very persuasive. But yeah. I don't know what happened, but it's just timing. We met at the right time, and yeah, and years later. How long have you worked here? Two years almost. Two years. Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty fresh. Yeah, it's coming out. I think my anniversary here is the first of March or first week of March. Yeah, very close. So it's coming up soon. Yeah. Do you bounce back and forth between the brew pub in here, or you're just no? Here? Most of my like brewing career has been in big breweries like this. Yeah. I find I had a, a, a an internship at, a, at Bose yeah. when I was in school, um, and they had their small. That's party. where I met you actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a fun Oktoberfest party. Uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and then uh, so they had it was right before they got their big giant system. So it was like uh, a twenty uh, barrel system or a 20 okay. hex system I can't remember but I remember being very intimidated by the size of it because mm-hmm. I had been brewing on a 5 hecto system sure. right. or I think it's a 10 barrel system that um, my part time job when I was in school had and then uh, but that was like physically a little bit too much for me because I'm really short and everything was taller than me right, right. <laughs> so I just I my first job out of school was working on a 20, 30 hex system and that seemed to really by the way this is a beautiful we didn't mention where we're sitting right now in yeah, the we're in the room up. it's gorgeous yeah, we're really, really. Uh, these are barrel aging beers behind us right now yeah can you guys talk us through what's uh, like the size of this bad boy and, and what we're uh, sitting amongst well the thing is um, it when I started Brupa, I wanted to have a small system to be to have a lot of flexibility. So I did the same thing when I, I moved to the packaging uh, uh, brewery. So I want to have a, like a smaller brew house and brew more uh, more often. Mm-hmm. So it's a 25 hecto uh, brew house. So we have 25 hecto fermenter, 50, and those one 100 hecto liter. Okay. So we brew four times a day to fill them. So we have a lot of flexibility if we do like just uh, one special keg release, uh, especially when it's a hoppy beer and you want to keep it fresh, or uh, when you go beer that need to be, or high volume beer gonna be on bigger fermenter, or beer that need, need to be uh, aged for a while, yeah, we do it on a on, on bigger scale. So it's, 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 uh, it's quite demanding, so you have to brew a lot, but I like the flexibility of it. But you guys have a couple series of beer, you have the, the Momentum series where you're releasing one every single month, right? Yeah. And then you have like one offs and the special beers, yeah. and the weird funky ones, and then the barrel aged, and it's like it's the, it's almost endless, right? Yeah. I really like that there's always options yeah. and it's never for more. the time of year, too. Like, yeah. um, you know, I don't want maybe uh, a wheat beer in the dead of winter, you know, I want something well, I think it's going barrel aged. Yeah. It's coming from the, the thing I, I don't like to brew always the same thing. I don't like to drink always the same thing. Um, so I like to, uh, and I could be like in the state of mind and say, oh, I'm really good at doing this, and, and it's good to doing that, but so you know what? I, I'd like to do this. I'll and, do it this and, way, and, uh, yeah. So I, that, and so that's why I, I, I also had to design my brewery to be able to, to, mm-hmm. to, to do that kind of beer program so it's a nightmare on distribution <laughs> in the warehouse <laughs> but worth it in the end right but I think yeah. it's worth it yeah absolutely you guys seem to be one of the few Canadian breweries that I mean, all my American like beer geek friends I, I know about and are into like how did the brand grow to the like I feel like Maybe Peche Motel is probably the closest beer to a Canadian whale in the sense of like you see how many people are out there right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't see here. it, but this, uh, this, well, this bar sure. is packed yeah. over here. There's not just five people. And there's mad people out in the cold. <laughs> yeah. And they're, you know, we're in the car park and there's people just like loading their trunks full of beer. Yeah. And, like, and trading so, beers and it's yeah. awesome. That's what it should be I've about. seen people like, cellars, like, you know, some of my friends have uh, cellars and they've just got full shelves of like, you know, like... Uh, Solstice d'hiver and then like all the different ones on this like from each year like, yeah, yeah like how did it get to that point when I don't think any other Canadian brewery and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here like something like the Alchemist or whatever they're like that Eddie has a myth around it and yeah. uh, you know Hill Farm said and a few other ones particularly from out here how did you guys get your beers to that stage like was it organic or was it like was there some sort of like some of a strategy well we basically never do any advertising so we basically uh I think first thing we're doing good beer is probably the first, the the most important part. Yeah, Yeah. and then yeah, we always organize party here and there. So we and I think we hire good people like Jennifer, (laughs) of course, (laughs) and good and people care about beer. So when you come to our pub, you can see people having fun, care about beer. So it really helped to have the the uh, spreading the the good news and. No, by chance and probably uh, we've been able to, to met 
uh, good people in the U.S. and we bring our beer there and they been put in good hands. And it's very hard to say. Uh, I think what really helped is we, we, as soon as we open, we, we try to get get out of thinking out of the box. Right. You know, think differently and and be creative, not just focus on money. Uh, for sure, that's the way I live my my uh, live my life. So this to win my uh, my money, but. At the same time, it's the first thing you put the money first. Usually, it doesn't work. So, if you put beer first, it should Absolutely. should work. Right. But I don't have a. I can I couldn't write a book with the secret success story. Right. So it's just it's just it just, it, it just, it just works for make good beer yeah, and it worked for us because it was it was real. Right. So, do you think it helped that you guys were some, somewhat of first movers in the industry, being that you were doing stuff in the '90s when a lot of like the vast majority weren't? So you guys had fantastic beer from the start and you were one of the early ones. So you kind of like secured your status yeah. As a, yeah. in, in the industry that was very young. But it yeah. was also different beers you were making too at the time. You were making more Belgian style beers or yeah. weird stuff. And that it most breweries like, weren't doing. It was really, yeah. in my perception of it all, it's very like, it was British style beers, a lot of like bitters, stouts, pale ales, that sort of thing. Yeah. And I don't know, like... I remember DDC catching my eye because of the Pesha Mortel. Yeah. It's like, well, what is this? Yeah. This right. is weird. And uh, and then I think I discovered the rosé not too long after that. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tea? <laughs> Flowers? What is happening? Flowers so, and beer. It's crazy. Yeah, but it was at that point. Like, no one was doing it, really. Uh, yeah. To me, and Alexander Keese was pretty exotic, too. Right. Like, that right. was an IPA. What Classic that? IPA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in some time, when, when you start, start earlier, it it's might be easier because... Uh, there's less competition, but at the same time, the market wasn't there. True. So yeah. uh, now I see brew pub and beer bar opening. They have like instance uh, success story. Right. Uh, when when we opened, uh, I can tell the six first six month. The, f- the first six month, we uh, we worked like fucking crazy. <laughs> so it's just. I, I, I was spending probably 20 hours a day at the pub, so... Uh, I think we read you, you didn't hire your first server until after six months, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, so you're like just running the show by yourself. So just was, you and your partner, right? Yeah, like yeah no partner, nothing. my girlfriend. Uh, That's insane. So it was insane. But, but cool and insane. It was cool and insane, but yeah, we, luckily we had good, good crowd during the weekend, during the weekdays. It was just, Quiet, yeah, right. and you know we were talking about beer in the journal, in the newspaper. Nobody really caring about, and so and we have no money to to do advertising. So, so that's why we developed like a different approach to be in beer festival, talk to your customer, you know, and make create party stuff, right? and yeah. make good stuff, and that's gonna work. And but it took a while. <laughs> so, so now I said, well, it's, it's tougher because there are more competition. So, well, in the same time, there's a way bigger market. So it's. If you're doing good stuff, you can you're probably gonna work. If you're doing bad stuff, it will not work. Right. So it's it's really different. It's really hard to compare. How have you seen the changes? Like, do you how do you perceive the way that it's grown? Like, craft beer being from nobody really interested in it to being somewhat of a burgeoning phenomenon, like worldwide. Like everywhere has a craft beer scene now. Like, yeah. How did, how how have you seen that grow? Well, it didn't really happen like uh, in one one day. No, really slow. I'm in the resistance almost 20 years. Yeah. But yeah, it was keeping going up, up. And that was, I always believed it would happen. Because people say, ah, this is a trend. So well, no. When you start doing uh, drinking good beer, you don't go back. No, you, you, know you might right. not. You might not just keep going, drinking better and better and you no know, hoppier and hoppier beer. But we'll never. You'll start never come back. Beer again. No, it's yeah, just, no, 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 no. no. no? So the create the market we have it will always stay for sure and probably so but it just ran up way faster than right. I could even dream about it. Well actually that's why we're here. We brought you some of our home brew and I'm just gonna trying to get a job. Yeah, just trying to get it. What do you think? What do you think? It's like listen to my mixtape. Like, you want you want to do it live? <laughs> yeah, we'll do it live. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see your face. <laughs> I just want to know real quick. I think people would want to know, like, how did? Is there a story behind Pache Mortel and, and how it got its like? I feel like that would be the biggest mythical beer in Canada. Period. Mm-hmm. I might be wrong. I think it's a big call, and almost certainly with uh, with the company. Is is that correct for one and two? Is there a story behind that? That sort of like. Or is it just one of those organic things that just happened and now you've got 500 people buying tickets to buy the barrel? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I think this is a bit organic because when uh, I decided to, to brew the beer the first time, is uh, by this time there was a lot of 
uh, mocha porter, uh, coffee stout, and it was always, yeah, uh, I kind of feel a little bit of coffee, but I'm not sure. No. It's a, hey, if you put coffee, just don't right. just have it. it, just like yeah. dump it in. I won't taste coffee in it, it needs yeah. to be a major ingredient, but I know it costs a lot of money. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it's go big or go home. Yes. And so, and like I said, I love coffee, I drink a lot of, of uh, I have my pretty good espresso machine at home and you know, pretty uh, uh, tough with, with when I go taste coffee in different places. And, uh, you have coffee snob too. Yeah, I'm with you. So, right with you. <laughs> I, so I decided to, to design a real coffee style. So you could hold oh, this differently. There's coffee in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I figured that, you know what? Could, the beer could support a coffee at this point what would be an imperial stout so right. it had the body some reasonable sweetness in it the alcohol can help that so that's how I create the beer the first time and so it tastes so good just during the fermentation it was just ooh, wow okay we have something here and the first batch just sold out so quick at the pub right and it, so we were giving brewing once in a while and People were talking about it. It was the, also the beginning of the Red Beer, the website. Ah, it was a great timing, right? And it was the right timing, actually. And uh, and Red Beer was quite popular in Quebec right at the beginning. And so we've been able to rank up pretty quickly on, on Red Beer with that beer. Right. So yeah, so we tried to export some beer for a beer festival in Chicago. And, and even to send a few kegs, they said, no, you need an importer. Ah, oh, shit. And we had a queue. It's okay. Just call Shelton Brother. Now they they're dealing with really small uh, brewer, and uh, they might be interested by you. And actually, yeah, they, they saw the, the reputation we had. They say, okay, we're going to have Montreal going to taste your beer. And they said, okay, we want to get your beer. And by this time, the regulation was saying we cannot sell beer outside of the brew pub. We, the beer that we, we brew there cannot be uh, sell outside of the pub. Just drink there. Okay. But that regulation stopped in Quebec, so I, I don't have to, write, to sell it in the brew pub. You can outside the brew pub, I can sell it in the US. Oh. So that's what we did. Right. We brewed and bottled by hand uh, yeah. two pallets of Peche Martel that we ship, we export in the US, and we make a big event about that. Nice. Just to say, screw you. Right, right, right. right. And so we don't have to write, and we had people. Driving from Montreal to, to buy go buy a bottle wow, in the US man. and bring it to back. leave the country to get a beer so from their country. <laughs> I think it helped create also like a myth so about that. Yeah, and, right. and but but the flavor of the beer made most of its job so for it's sure and, and, and takes place. But I think the way we, we did it and and also yeah we do a, a coffee beer and it's simply it's, it's coffee and nice. you taste it you feel it yeah and it's, it's good beer it's, it's, and I think it's also what people really focus now so when you say you put an ingredient make sure that it's, it's, it's not just on the label it's, it brings something right you know? that's dope well I want a beer I gotta go to the washroom yeah um, well you know what that was fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah. get this long so this was uh, I could ask, ask everything I needed to so thank you guys very very much I appreciate it so much it was awesome. yeah. awesome. yeah. a great so time much. Like uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. thank you Jen absolutely Jen you guys are great thank you so much guys. follow GDC online I'll put the stuff do you know where it is online I think it's like Mikro Bastery GDC on my Instagram yeah I lost it Layla, yeah. no, but it's like I have no. Idea. Just give me that blank stare. Like, yeah. We don't do that. Um, yeah. No, we don't. We just make. There's people for that. that. People for that. Thank you guys very much. Um, we're gonna go check out the bottle. Yeah. Lunch. Yeah. Drink cool. some more beer. All right. Perfect. Thanks, yeah. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.